Tricolor Turf Wars are a brand new game mode for Splatoon 3 Splatfest, and that is only available for a limited time during a second half of a Splatfest. There's a lot of questions about what the rules are, how they work, but also how to get in one at the moment, so let's talk about it. First I'll talk about the mode itself, so the good part, and later we'll talk about the problems as there's quite a few. Tricolor Turf War is a 4v2v2 three-sided turf war where the three teams of a Splatfest are battling against each other for the most turf painted. Seemingly, the two underdog teams are somewhat allied against the halftime winning team of Splatfest, but that is only a partial alliance. Tricolor Turf Wars have slightly modified versions of Splatoon 3 stages that are altered for the purposes of a three-sided battle, where the top team spawns at the middle of the map and the two underdogs at the normal opposite spawn points. The goal of the game mode is of course to have the most turf painted, but there is additional objective that all three teams should focus on, as it's possibly the most important part of Tricolor battles. I will be mostly talking about this game mode from the perspective of an attacking team since my team is on the attacker side, but it should be pretty obvious what to do as a defending team as well. In the middle of the map, a so-called ultra signal spawns that the defending team has to protect, as if an attacking member can stay in place of the signal for long enough, they will summon an indestructible painting machine called the Sprinkler of Doom on their side of the map, taking away a large majority of the space that the defending team can fight on since these machines are relentless at painting and thus cornering the defending team more and more into less space between the attackers. There can only be two Sprinklers of Doom in a single match, and if both teams get one, they will have larger base turf. But if a single team can secure two of them, they can spawn a Sprinkler of Doom right in the middle of the stage, which will almost surely secure their victory. Once the Sprinklers are spawned, it's an all-out war between all three teams on who can get the most turf inked and all alliances are shattered. Now let's talk a little bit about Ultra Signal since it's the most vital part of this game mode. Capturing it is done by simply standing in the signal and channeling it, and the time it takes to capture it depends on the amount of attempts already made to capture this signal. As you can imagine, this makes it very competitive as not only you want to capture the signal at all costs, but you might also want to bait the opposing team into making it easier to capture it for you, only to betray them in the final second for a quick capture yourself. As a defending team, you want to stop from them getting to the middle at all costs because every single opponent who even channels it for a second will make it easier for them to capture it in the future. So while the attacking team wants to be the defenders, there is definitely an obvious duel between them as well, and once both sprinklers are present, there is no mercy. The reward system is also not as obvious. For the attacking teams, the most important part of earning more clout is to beat the defending team's turf score while if the defending team can at least end up at the second place, that's already worth a lot more for them since they managed to beat one out of the two attacking teams. So whether you are defending or attacking matters a lot when it comes to the final point distribution. Additionally, how many points the teams get also matter on their Splatfest ranks and how much they struggled with the objective of Tricolor Turf War, namely the Ultra Signals. The easier time they had to capture them, the more points they receive, and the harder it was, the less, and the defending team is rewarded that much more. I personally tremendously enjoy this game mode, it's a lot of fun even though it has a lot of loopholes and strategies people have already developed to play the system and ruin the overall fun that Splatfest is supposed to be, but sadly Nintendo has also made a lot of errors when designing this game mode and how it works that allowed people to play the system in the first place, so let's talk about just a few of the glaring issues of Tricolor Turf War. Well, first of all, Nintendo has announced that they are limiting the amount of Tricolor Turf Wars players can enter and they mix in normal Turf Wars in the rotation while they also try to improve their matchmaking. A lot of you have commented on my other videos and in general that it's almost impossible to get into a Tricolor Turf War and I also think it's a mistake on their part for multiple reasons. At the very least, it's an issue because there are so many players who can't afford to sit down for hours on end to try to get into a Tricolor Turf War and never experience this, in my opinion, thrilling mode. The other reason is simply, half of Splatfest everyone is spamming Turf War battles, and the second day is hyped up for the arrival of Tricolor Turf War, and then you're forced to do even more normal Turf Wars? Most players are probably already fed up with it and just want to see Tricolor Turf War, it's the new shiny thing. Right now I can maybe get into a Tricolor Turf War every 5 or 6 normal matches, if I'm lucky, since there are communication errors and even this weird, not enough player's error? Which I'm sure is a direct proof of matchmaking servers struggling, but even then, apparently I'm lucky as there are people who can get a single tricolor match in hours. 
It could be due to winning or losing your matches, since Splatfest currently has this tendency to massively reward players who keep winning, which takes us to another issue. If the matchmaking really depends a lot whether you're winning or losing, then it should be that much more important for a proper balancing to be done when matching you against other players. While I think it's important to reward skill and success, if the matchmaking balance is broken, it's straight up punishment for a large majority of the player base not being able to experience the joy of a 10 times or 100 times battle victory, and if whether you can get into a tricolor turf war battle also depends on your victories, well that's just another way to make a lot of players sad and miss a cool game mode. I mean Splatfest is supposed to be a community event for everyone to have fun. If you're alienating a large portion of the player base, because let's be honest, the casual player base is the majority, then there's a problem. While there are several other issues at hand, possibly the biggest issue of Tricolor Turf War is that its point reward system is just bad. It has been talked by a lot of people how the defending team who won the Splatfest at halftime technically has zero chance at winning the Splatfest while in the game's current state, just in case someone watches this later and hopefully it got fixed. Because of this, a third of the player base is straight up punished by the system. Instead, I would much rather have Tricolor Turf War randomized on who is attacking and who is defending, which would also allow everyone to experience both sides and how fun it can be, and then further improve the point reward system so that one side isn't absolutely penalized for just ending up in a position they had no control over. In the end, Tricolor Turf War is a lot of fun. I'm having a blast with it, but sadly, I can only play so much of it right now with how hard it is to get into a single match. Hopefully, it will be fixed in the future, and we will see many, many improvements over this system and the Splatfest so we can all enjoy it to its full extent. I hope everyone is enjoying Splatfest as much as possible, despite the issues and the matchmaking problems, and I also hope this video helped you clear up the basics of Tricolor Turf War. Thank you for watching, and consider checking out the rest of my channel as I have a lot of videos for Splatfest and in general for Splatoon 3, and all support is greatly appreciated for the future in creating more Splatoon content. Thank you again, and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye